are around six and a half thousand languages in the world, so it's a wonder we manage to talk to each other at all. It can be scary and confusing when you turn up in a foreign country and you can't even read the signs, let alone talk to people. But there is one language we all understand some of, the language of the body. You can spot a bad date from a mile away as the two people sit there, arms crossed, and not making eye contact. We can read confidence, shyness, and, well, that person just needs the bathroom. So come find out what your body language gives away. Your body can communicate directly with the hub. All you need to do is rub us lovingly on the subscribe button to show us that you care. Not too hard now, we're ticklish. Eye contact. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul, so anyone who stares lovingly into them is actually just a peeping Tom. How your eyes meet with other eyes normally is an indication of confidence, interest, and honesty. It's supposed to be one of the most important factors in giving a great job interview. If you turn up and stare at the floor, you're unlikely to get hired, unless you're applying for floor technician, in which case you're hired. But be careful not to overdo it. Good, strong eye contact is one thing, a hard stare is another. This is not universal though. In areas like Eastern Europe, it's fairly normal to have people stare at you on public transport. They're not being creepy or aggressive, as people would assume in the UK or US, and it's fairly normal. Nail legs. For many parts of the day, our legs' main job is to get us from point A to point B and to stop us falling off our chairs again. But when they're not stuffed under a desk or bouncing along the pavement, they can reveal your personality type. For men, the classic manspreading shows a dominant person, someone who likes to be in charge and show everyone who's boss. They're the kind of people who give themselves you demand pep talks in the mirror every morning. In most European and Asian countries, men often sit with their left leg crossed over their right, with both pointing downwards. In the US, this would probably indicate a closed nature. But if one leg is horizontal with the ankle resting over the knee, then this is a confident and often argumentative pose. Imagine, if you will, a smug yoga teacher who is explaining why you shouldn't eat gluten. Female legs. Female leg position has obviously been influenced by clothing, so a leg spread is pretty rare because it's seen as impolite in many cultures. As a result, most female leg poses involve the legs being together, but there's still plenty of variety in there. The more closed form is when one foot wraps around the back of the other leg. This is called an ankle lock. In both men and women, it's a sign of repression or fear. A study showed that 88% of people lock their ankles when sitting in a dentist chair to have a procedure. Only 68% did it for just a checkup. The female power pose is both legs together in parallel and tilted to a slight angle. It shows control and is often used in fashion modeling. It also makes women look more like mermaids, and who wouldn't want that? Playing with hair. Men don't often play with their hair, but this is likely due to having less of it, since you see plenty of little boys doing it. Running your hands through your hair, especially taking hair away from your face, is often seen as flirtatious and open, since you are showing you are happy with your appearance. The most extreme of these is tossing your head back and shaking out your hair, but it can also make you look like you're auditioning for a shampoo advert. Playing with hair is not always a good sign, though. Holding hair indicates awkwardness and nervousness, so make sure that your hands don't linger too long in your locks. A good contrast is someone curling their hair around a finger. It can be flirtatious or done as a way to relax, but if the hair is held by one hand and twirled by another, it's a much more nervous signal. Drumming fingers we fidget from time to time in a variety of different ways. There's the various hair flicks and twirls we mentioned before, there's nail biting, head scratching, mouth wriggling, and the list goes on. But most of these are unobtrusive. After all, you wouldn't notice them unless you were looking at the person. However, finger drumming is a loud and obvious message. 
It broadcasts your impatience or frustration across the whole room. And you often don't realize you're doing it. In times of stress or long waits, many people drum their fingertips on the desk or the table. It's also very common to use an object like a pen or even the back of your phone. For a lot of people, it's subconscious, in which case it's a sign of nerves. In short, your body doesn't know what to do with itself, but it can be used consciously, often by more dominant people to show that they are not happy with the current situation. Arms and Hands the most common body language signal of all is crossing your arms. You don't need to be a psychologist to know what it means. It's probably one of the first major signals that children learn to read. In fact, in every kid's cartoon, a parent with their arms crossed is a sign of big trouble. However, if your arms are crossed behind your back, the meaning is reversed. Shyness turns to fearlessness, anger becomes calm. Although, if you just committed a crime, this gesture probably means you're being arrested. Positive hand gestures include such things as rubbing your palms together. This shows that you're expecting a good outcome. Holding your palms open facing up makes you more trustworthy since you are showing you have nothing hidden in them. Where you point your body when it comes to body language, your chest is basically a big arrow, so where you are pointing it indicates where your interest lies. In a meeting, anyone whose chest is pointed away from the meeting is either not interested or disagrees with what's being said. Being bent forward with a chest aiming down is a sign of being guarded. You're not committing one way or the other. It's a good indicator of romance, too. People who connect well and are interested in each other will naturally be drawn to face each other. So if you're on a cinema date and they're leaning on the far armrest, there's probably no Hollywood happy ending for you. If you're at a party, it's a good way to pick out who is interested in who. People's heads will turn towards whoever is talking, but their body often indicates who they are truly wanting to listen to. Shaking Hands there's a lot of science involved in a simple handshake. Actually, they can be confusing for people from Asian cultures where this kind of body contact is pretty uncommon. There are many factors in a handshake. The pressure, the angle, what you do with your other hand. No one likes a weak handshake where it feels like you're waggling an old fish around. It implies a lack of determination and commitment. When it comes to your free hand, there are a number of different positions. Using it to cup the hand from beneath in a two-handed shake shows sincerity and a desire for closeness but cupping from above shows dominance as you are trapping their hand between yours. Gripping the upper arm while shaking hands is also supposed to show togetherness. However, it has become synonymous with politicians, which gives it a slightly fake feel now. Lying. Lying is a skill that takes practice. We're not saying that you should practice, but if you want anyone to believe all those things you wrote on your resume, well, it's in your own hands. Lack of eye contact is a typical sign of dishonesty. If your eyes go up to the right, it implies you are using your imagination, not your memory, so you are making something up. Another sign of lying is a dry mouth, so look out for people licking their lips or swallowing strangely. In ancient China, they actually had a test where the accused would hold a handful of dried rice in their mouth for a few minutes. When they spat it out, if it was still dry, they were said to be lying. Flirting In a perfect world, you could just walk up to anyone you found attractive and tell them. If they feel the same, you'd go out. If they don't, you just say thank you and goodbye. See? easy. But life doesn't work like this and we have created an incredibly complicated dance around one person liking another. Birds display bright feathers, lions control attractive territory, and humans accidentally say thank you too many times and try to find jeans without cake stains on them. A common tactic you see in flirting guides is to mimic the other person's posture or even mannerism since this shows you are on their wavelength. Just hope you're both not trying to do this at the same time or it will turn into a weird mirror dance. Remember, much like spoken language, body language can easily be misunderstood. Some people might cross their arms because they're cold, not because they're defensive. To make it easier, always wear a t-shirt with your current mood written on it in big letters. We hope you enjoyed our body language episode and that you use some part of your body to hit subscribe. Catch you again soon.